So how are we doing out there today? So I had an idea. You know how... I shouldn't say... I, I should say... When individuals like myself are making videos, we always end up with footage that got cut, you know? Well, I ended up with some cut footage that I thought you guys might find interesting. Uh, I actually did not realize it until I started playing with this footage and, you know, putting some side-by-side -side comparisons in there and stuff. So, basically, you remember the ported uh, Home Light Super XL Auto? And I showed you a video, like a side-by-side -side of it, with a stock saw. And, you know, it won easily. Well, that wasn't the only cut I made with that saw, you know. <clears throat> so I actually started out with a 24-inch bar. And I ran with it. Now, I ran into an issue that the 24-inch bar, the rakers were set just a little too deep. So the saw was kind of jumping in the cut, you know, a little skippy and jumpy. And I didn't want to use that one. So I put the 20 inch bar back on and made a cut with it. But I wasn't quite happy with the sharpening. So then I went ahead and sharpened it. And that was the cut that you guys saw on the video. But I thought what was interesting is that whenever I threw the side by side footage of the freshly sharpened 20 inch versus the freshly sharpened 24 inch but the 24 inch had the rakers a little too deep and I thought that was interesting watching the two cut side by side so that's what I'm about to show you now stick around because I'm going to show you another one or two I don't know we'll see how what I can find but at least one more side by side comparison after this so I think you might find this interesting. All right? So, is that what you're expecting? Um, I knew it was going to be close. But this kind of shows you a few things here. Um, I think the 20 inch bar, the rakers are just set too high. Uh, they, they're, they're still at factory. I've never done anything to them. And I know I've sharpened the chain probably three times now. But the 24 inch bar is towards its end of its life. So it's possible that's part of the factor because it is towards the end of its life. Uh, there isn't as much metal to drag through the wood. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know if it's the, the breakers being a little deeper because the chain was kind of jumping and skipping and it, it wouldn't be making good smooth contact with the wood. So, I don't know. That could be a factor. But I got this feeling it's just because it's at the end of its life versus the other one is at the beginning of its life. You know what I mean? I think that might be playing more of a factor, but I don't know. If, I mean, if it was possible to make the rakers a little taller, I would do this and compare them. 
but I, I you know, you can't do that. <laughs> but uh, that 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 24 inch bar was on the 925 before, uh, 82 cc, and it didn't behave. I should say it, it it pulled the 24 inch chain or bar a little bit better, you know, or a lot better, I should say. Another thing to think about here is uh, the 24 inch bar was faster than the 20 inch. So I don't think bar length and extra chain had anything to do with the speed of the cut. I, I, I don't think it played a factor at all. You know what I mean? I think the saw had enough torque to pull either at that RPM no matter what. I don't think the bar length made any difference at all. But I thought that was rather interesting to see that. There's a few other things you could try to point out too. Um, the 24 inch bar was a little deep and you could see it jumping and skipping. So how is that on the saw or even yourself? So like the bar, you know, it, it's working, it's, it's bouncing, it's, it's a rougher to handle, if you know what I mean. So, even though it was a little faster, would you want to handle that saw all day? You know what I mean? What would that do to the saw itself? The extra vibrations, you know what I mean? So, those are things to consider as well for that what was it? One, maybe two seconds? So, you know, just some things to think about there. Now, I'm going to show you another side-by-side. -side. These are both the 20-inch bar. You're going to get to see before and after I sharpened it. Okay? What's funny is the last time this saw was ran was whenever I did the test, the test cuts on that video a little while back. Uh, and it was melting through that wood. And that's how sharp the chain was at that time. Just that wood was softer, so it didn't play as much of a factor, where this wood is quite a bit harder to cut through. So you see it more in this wood. Um, I use the same sharpener all the time. It's... It's electric. It's one of those rotary grinders. I mean, I get the depth of the stone is set exactly the same all the time. So that's, you know, however deep it's in the gullet, never changes. It just, that, that's where the sharpener is set up. And the angle of the sharpening, it's always the same. Because I got a nice little gauge there. All, literally, all I literally got to do is hold it down and grind it. That's it. There is almost no human factor involved there. I mean, you'd have to be pretty hard or pretty bad in order to screw one of these sharpenings up. Um, but I just, I thought this video was rather interesting. So check this out. This is side by side of, they're both, I would consider both sharp, but one has a, some cuts on it and the other one is fresh. So. Check it out. You might enjoy this.
So what do you think? Um, so the difference between the two is literally about, I'm thinking maybe two tanks of gas. That's that's on the only difference between the two, really. No change to the rakers at all. Um, so I ran probably two tanks out of them, the one chain, and then the other one was freshly sharpened. That's the difference. Now this, again, this wood is extremely hard, so any little, um, any little thing that's off will show up drastically in this wood. It's just the way it is. Um, the harder it is, the, the more perfect things need to be in order for it to work great. You know what I mean? It just comes with the territory, I guess. Most people don't cut wood that's this dry. I mean, this firewood's been sitting here for like two years, drying away in the hot sun, you know? So it's, it's really dry. Uh, this, the, my area or where this wood is stored doesn't hold water at all. So when it rains, it's gone quick. It doesn't lay on the ground. This is like the driest spot on the property, really. Uh, it's actually sitting on top of an old, like, railroad bed. So it, there's, it's kind of, you know, raised. So it just, it just never gets, never gets wet, you know? And it drains super fast. That's, that's one of the reasons we, we, uh, we've always kept our wood down there. We, we used to get trioxal loads and just that's where everything went. But I thought, I thought this video was kind of interesting. I think that's all I'm going to do for today. Post a comment, tell me what your thoughts are. Maybe I missed something. But uh, I thought this was a rather interesting video. Just a, a, a neat perspective, you know? Uh, it's the edited footage is what you what I, should, I guess you could say. And sometimes there's something to be learned from the, the stuff we edit out. So I wanted to share that with you. All right, till the next time. Later.